The reviews are in, and we're going to tell you what they are. He's Todd Vandenberg. I'm Rob Steele, and we've got, frankly, some stuff that is... Well, okay, some of it's new, but, uh, yeah, a couple of them we're going to call classics. We'll call them classic movies, because... I'm feeling old this week. Something about my back. Anyway, we'll start off with something new, which would be something Todd watched this week. And technically, it's not a movie, but it's on Netflix. So that counts, right? It counts. It's entertainment. At least it's entertaining to me. There you go. Talking about what most likely will be the final Netflix Marvel is that right? The final Netflix Marvel show? Or are they I doing think a- that might be another show? Jessica Jones. Yeah, I, I take that back. There's a... There's a Season three of Jessica Jones. Thank you. Okay, so it's the penultimate, likely, Marvel Netflix series, The Punisher, uh, which came about strictly because The Punisher, the character, was sort of a guest star on one of the seasons of Daredevil, Daredevil season two. Yeah. And he was so popular, people <clears throat> demanded it. And for some odd reason, Netflix responded to their audience, unlike what they're doing with the other Marvel shows, but they created a Punisher series. First season was excellent. Season two, I think, even improved on the first season. Uh, I was surprised by how nuanced and complex the Punisher character was was done in the first season. And it carries over in this one. John Bernthal, if you've seen Baby Driver, he's in Baby Driver. He's excellent. If you've seen The Walking Dead, he's in the first few seasons. Excellent there. And he has really found his role as Frank Castle. This season... He has left New York. He's trying to just start a new life. Basically gets into a bar fight, but it's a Punisher bar fight. So there's lots and lots of blood. And because it's the Punisher, it's not just a bar fight. It's because bad guys are chasing this teenage girl. Frank doesn't know why, but Frank doesn't like to see teenage girls attacked. So Frank takes action, (coughs) Punisher style. So then the dynamic is between Frank and Rachel, the young girl. Except that's not really her name, and you'll find out as the show goes along, but that doesn't really matter. It's not a supporter. So she won't tell him what's going on, but he takes her with him to protect her. Uh, kind of maybe kidnaps her because, you know, he's frank. He does what he wants. Yeah. The story progresses. You learn a little more about what's going on. You also, at the end of the first episode, find out that Billy Russo, who was the antagonist in the first season of Punisher, Billy's back. And Billy is out of his coma. And Billy is getting therapy, and this is not going to go the way it should go because it's the Punisher. So you wind up with two antagonists in this. You wind up with this mysterious organization chasing this girl, and you wind up with Billy Russo. Being that there are 13 episodes, it takes its time playing it out. But unlike so many streaming services, you don't spend the first episode thinking, oh, okay, well, that's cool. I like it. There, I saw enough to make me want to watch the rest. The first episode is excellent, period. Keeps on going from there. <laughs> uh, I'm just looking over the IMDb ratings. And if you're not familiar with it, Ted, the listener, Ted knows it. IMDb ratings for films, movies, whatever, on a 1 to 10 scale. These are the ratings for the episodes. 9.1, 8.5, 9.1, 8.2, 8.6, 8.4, 8.7, 8.6, 8.5, 8.6, 8.7, 8.8, 8.9, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.
you find out more about their motivations. You find out more about, oh, these could be real people. They're not just cartoon villains and they're out to destroy the world because they're villains. They have reasons for everything they do. It's very, very much like Michael B. Jordan's character in Black Panther. It's very much like Thanos in Infinity War. Doesn't mean they're good people. Doesn't mean they're even anti-heroes, but there are reasons for them to do what they do. There are reasons that they're awful people. And it makes the characters so much more interesting. And you feel a little bit of sympathy for both of them. And John Berenthal's like off the charts excellent as, as Punisher. I mean, there's a long sequence where he just remembers his family and he's thinking about his family, of course. Spoiler alert, they're all dead. And if you didn't know about that about the Punisher, it's like you didn't watch season one. You never saw one of the comic books. You never heard of the character because that's one of the defining things about him. So that's why he's the Punisher. Yeah, it's just he's so damn good in this. I, I, again, this would take out all the fights, all the physical fights, all the gunplay. This would still be an interesting show to watch because of the interplay between the characters, between Frank and his friends. Frank, the guy who doesn't need help because he's the Punisher. Yet he has these friends who are willing to help him. The anti, well, not the anti heroes because they're not, but the villains who have their own motivations for doing things. And it makes sense for them to want to do things that way. It's just really, really well done. Um, again, if Netflix cancels this, and I have no idea why they wouldn't, because they've canceled everything else they have in Marvel. Yeah. I hope that Disney just opens up a bucket of money, dumps it on Netflix, and says, hey, we're going to take these characters. We're going to, we don't want to wait two years to take this over because they really need season three of the Punisher. Not because there's a cliffhanger, just because it needs to continue the story and the end, the, the, the climax in, in the whirlwind and the actual end in the whirlwind, both are just perfect, classic, absolute dead on Punisher moments. Uh, damn, I mean, it's just really, really good show. But if you, you don't like violence this is the worst possible thing for you to see so <laughs> don't pop up your six-year-old in front of this and think oh it's a marvel hero uh, no uh uh-uh, no don't do that please yeah, don't take him to see deadpool either gosh no kidding just thought i'd point that out <clears throat> <laughs> no i looked this up because i rem- i actually remember collecting the punisher books for a while and he didn't actually get his first full regular series until 1986 Which is interesting because the movie I'm going to talk about came out in 1985. Interesting. That's as close to a segue as I'm going to get because these are very (laughs) – And the movie I'm talking about is actually – I mean Punisher based on – some people say comic book. Some people say graphic novel. Whatever. I'm doing a movie based on a board game. Woohoo! And actually I think it's the only movie based on a board game that ever worked. And uh, the board game is Clue. Which for some reason, and actually, Todd, if you know the answer to this, I'd love to find this out because I haven't found it anywhere on the net. Why is Clue in the UK called Cluedo? I don't get that. I have no idea. They just add the letters D-O on the end of it, and I don't know why. Anyway, if you aren't familiar with the board game, the movie actually does help. Actually, it helps if you are familiar with the board game because – In the game, you just have these six characters who have to go from room to room, gathering clues to find out who killed someone. The movie explains all this stuff, which I think is spectacular. It gives it an actual story. Your main six characters, Mrs. Peacock, Mrs. White, Miss Scarlet, Colonel Mustard, Professor Plum, and Mr. Green, are all gathered together, given aliases, um, and gathered together at this big mansion, where one of the first things we find out is... They're all being blackmailed. Who are they being blackmailed by? By that other guest over there in the corner, Mr. Body. (gasps) Oh, no. And he ends up getting killed while the lights are off. And we have to find out which of these people did it before the police show up. Now there's a storyline for the game. What a concept. But the movie took this premise, which kind of has it, it has a horror movie potential and turns it on its ear because this is a comedy. And it's a funny as hell comedy. Uh, the movie does start, it does start off a bit slow because you have to figure out what's going on first. But once it gets going, uh, by the end of the movie, they're literally running between rooms to figure stuff out. It gets really fast paced. But even in the slow moments, there's 
a lot of, I'm going to call them one line zingers that you may not get every, you know, the first time you watch the movie, you watch it again and go, I missed that the first time that line makes sense. And that's funny, which is great because it's got an excellent cast to go with all of this. I mean, we're looking at uh, what Tim Curry, Christopher Lloyd, Michael McKean, Martin Mull, Leslie Ann Warren, Eileen Brennan, and Madeline Kahn are your main characters. Uh, let's see, just throw in a, a couple other people. Kelly Nakahara, who I always loved in MASH. And this is the only other thing I've ever seen her in. Really? But, you know, there we go. She plays the cook. Um, and just for trivia purposes, the singing telegram girl who has, what, I think 10 seconds of screen time uh, was Jane Wideland from the Go-Go's. <laughs> really? Oh, my gosh. Um, see, it, they, see, Todd didn't know that one. It, it's just a cute thing. Um, but it, it's a very fast paced, very witty comedy whodunit, which if and actually I'll bring this up too. in <clears throat> it had a gimmick for the when it was released in the theater in 1985, which was it had three different endings. And you don't know which ending you're going to get when you buy the ticket at the theater. So you could get, you know, ending number one, ending number two, or ending number three. And each of them, a different person did it for different reasons, but all of them do, in fact, make sense with everything we've seen in the movie so far. But if you get things like the, I'm sure this is out on Blu-ray, but I know there's a DVD, probably several different DVDs. The DVD has taken all three endings and put them on there. So you're not missing any of the endings. They're all there and all of them are good. And there are little one-liners throughout this that if you watch this movie and go to work the next day, I think just accidentally you'll use two or three of them. <laughs> I mean, so, am I wrong? An example, please. You're going to make me give an example. Oh, let's see. Are you trying to make me look stupid in front of the other guests? They don't need any help from me, sir. Oh, that's right. Oh, hang on a minute. Um, that's just the first one that comes to mind. While you're thinking of that, I have the answer to your question as to yes. why it's Pluto. Oh, go apparently it was it was it was uh, the original game was created by a gentleman named Mr. Pratt, Anthony Pratt, in Great Britain, and publisher picked it up, called it Cluedo because Cluedo is a combination of the words clue, of course, and the Latin word ludo means I play. Therefore, uh-huh. I play. And it's called Clue in the United States because we're not idiots and we want people to understand what the game is about. So we just call it Clue. Cluedo. That, but it, that works. Bizarre. It does work, but weird. Anyway, thank you. So, yeah. Um, Pratt. I wonder if he's Chris Pratt's great granddad. That would be so funny. And probably that'd be totally bizarre. Stupid. It would be bizarre. But anyway, yeah, Clue, spectacular movie. Oh, look, a UK tie-in, which goes to your next movie because I think it's a British character who's from Peru. It is indeed a British character who's from, actually, Darkest Peru. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. Darkest Peru. From Darkest Peru. This movie is, again, we're going with, I don't know if you can really call this considered classic because it only came out in 2014. But it should be considered classic because it is. It is a fantastic movie. Uh, this is Paddington, based on the, chil- the children's book, series of children's books, about a bear. A bear who... Uh, has a particular fondness for marmalade. I didn't watch this when this first came out, just considering, oh, this is a kid's movie. And I do like a lot of kid's movies, but for whatever reason, this particular one didn't appeal to me. And I missed having seen it for the past five years because I wish I had seen it when it first came out. Our friend Lee, the gentleman who will fulfill his contractual obligations to the show and eventually make one more appearance this year, had been talking about Paddington and how great a movie it is. And that Paddington 2, which I have not seen yet, is actually even better. So I have to watch Paddington 2 this week. But Paddington, not just a great kids movie, not just a great family movie. It's a great movie. As Rob said, it's about a bear who comes from darkest Peru. The setup is, if you're unfamiliar with the story, an explorer comes from Great Britain and he explores darkest Peru. He meets a family of bears. Uh, Why these bears are in Peru, not really sure. Uh, why they speak English quite well. Well, they don't when he first meets them because they live in Peru. But he teach, they, they generally communicate and they figure it out and he teaches them English. Sad things happen. The young bear grows up, 
mom sends him off to Great Britain to go stay with the explorer because he sent them a note, left them a note, come visit me in Great Britain if you're ever this way. Like bears in Peru would just nom- normally just occasionally show up in Great Britain. But, you know, it is a kid's movie. So the young bear. Can you imagine searching up. them at the airport? <laughs> that would take a while. But at anyway, least I get paid to do the job. So now that that's yeah. over. But apparently you won't be getting back pay because, you know, why would you do that? Mm. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, the young bear shows up in Great Britain, just hoping that he can find the explorer. Kind of a silly bear. He's not, by the way, his name is not Paddington at this point. I can't recall what his, what his name is, but it's not Paddington because he's a bear. Why would his name be Paddington? That would be silly. A family is coming back from holiday. They see the bear. They don't think anything unusual about seeing a bear. Because apparently in this world, you might occasionally see talking wildlife in airports or train stations. So it happens. Mom wants to take him home just for the night, just for the night to make sure he's okay. Mom being played by Sally Hawkins, who is a wonderful actress, she lead actress in Shape of Water. And <laughs> this movie is just so sweet without being overly saccharine. Uh, so funny. There's so many set pieces, which, and this is one of the reasons I didn't see it, because it almost looked over the top, taken out of context. You see the bear surfing down the stairs on a flood of water. And and again, that's in the trailer. So if you didn't even see the trailer, I'm sorry, that's not a spoiler. And taken out of context, it's just, oh, this is just over the top silliness. But the setup is so organic and natural to the movie that it really, really works. There are a lot of scenes like this and like that in the movie. Basically, Paddington, who is named by the family because he happens to be at the Paddington train station, yay, winds up staying with the family while they try to find him a home. Then they try to eventually find the explorer. And you have to have an antagonist. This one is not really particularly deeply considered, doesn't have wonderful, rich motivations. She's got motivation, and it totally makes sense, but you don't find out what it is until late in the film. Nicole Kidman plays the villain in this, and she is phenomenally good. I mean, she's a great actress, but she is so good in this role. Uh, She just chews up every scene she's in without being hammy somehow, because, again, she's a great actress. The movie is excellent. Uh, Paddington is... Paddington is animated. Hopefully you figured that out. CGI. This is not an animated film, though. Everything else is live action. The animation on Paddington is excellent. The acting is terrific. Great script. Uh, There's nothing too overly in it for kids, because that would be really strange if it was. Uh, But again, there's so much going on that as a parent, you won't be sitting there cringing, looking at your watch, wondering when this damn thing is going to be over. You're probably going to be telling your kids, okay, if you're good, we get to watch this again next weekend. And you'll be there watching it with him. And it's just a phenomenally excellent family movie. Uh, I can't think of a single thing. I can't think of a single reason for anyone not to watch it unless you just don't like quality film. Brett Easton Ellis probably would hate it. But other than that, all <laughs> normal humans would should really, really enjoy Paddington. Wonderful, wonderful, light movie. Not A little bit different from The Punisher. A bit. A bit. I did want to ask you this. Concerning Paddington, the British story about a bear. Yes. And let's say Christopher Robin, a British story about a bear. About a bear, yes. Which would you say is the better film? Oh, gosh. I know that's not going to be an easy one. No, it isn't. Um, You would have to come back to me in about maybe next week. (laughs) Because off the top of my head, I can't say which one is better. I think they're both excellent, phenomenal films. One thing about Paddington that I thought was was an awesome little touch is <clears throat> the author of the book, Michael Bond. Yes. He's in the movie. Oh, hello. Yeah. He has a cameo in the movie. Not as, not as the author, but he's in the movie. And it's like, how cool is that? That the guy who wrote this. Does that may be a, a, one of those little touches to push it over. Yeah. So I think, I mean, you know, just... a. a. Milne was not in Christopher Robin. Yeah. Well, that'd be hard, kind of hard to put him in it, but uh, just so, so well done. I mean, just and both of those movies. And I'm glad you mentioned that because you had talked about Christopher Robin before I saw it, which made me want to see it even more. And I agree with you that that's just a phenomenal movie. So really two 
terrific kids slash family slash just whatever age bracket <laughs> movies. I mean, slash. Well, yep. That's a Punisher film. Yeah. There we go. Back to the Punisher. But yeah, Paddington is excellent. Christopher Robin <laughs> Robin's excellent. Uh, both great movies about family and bears. There we go. The theme, both of them. Make it a double yeah. feature day. Not bears. <laughs> it's, you totally should. So, uh, Sounds like a plan. Come back on what Monday when we'll have more movie news and next Friday when we'll have reviews until then you should probably get out and go see a movie. That's pretty much it.